Hey everyone, my name is Adam. I'm going to show you how to fix a broken uh, pull-out kitchen drawer here. You might wonder why they break so easy. Well, it's two reasons. A lot of times they're loaded with uh, utensils, so knives and forks and things like that, and that's all metal. And when you have a drawer full of metal, that's a lot of weight. So what happens is, here's, pretend this is the uh, frame of your front of the cupboard, and that's right there. The whole reason why the drawer stops going backwards when you close it is it because it's because it hits this piece of wood, the frame, and it stops. Well, if you keep closing the door, especially if you have kids who keep slamming it, it's going to be, you know, it's like something hitting this off every single time. So, um, the second reason why these break all the time is you can see what this is made out of. It's just particle board. And that's really weak. Anyway, so what do you do? Uh, I'm going to use a piece of pine to replace this. I'm not going to replace it with particle board. If you go into the hardware store, you might see something like this. My sister tried to repair one of her drawers with this. This is um, MDF. You can see, she thought that was wood grain on the end. What you see on this end is <clears throat> saw marks, not wood grain. You got to see uh, actual wood grain. You want real wood. This will just uh, cause the same problem. Actually, this is even almost worse than what she had originally. So don't use this. Get actual solid wood. Pine's fine. A cheap piece of pine will work. And then what you can do, I've already cut this one out, but just put it in the drawer. Trace the line across. You know exactly how high to make it. Make it put it there and trace it up. And just two cuts. Real easy. So I have the piece of wood I'm going to put in. And this is actually thicker than this. You can see the difference there. The actual wood is thicker and that's even better because it'll be stronger. So the first thing I'm going to do is take out these staples. What I'm going to do is put this piece of wood here to raise it up and you can see that this little track is now um, further behind so I can rest it on this piece of wood like this and hang the staples over the edge of the piece of wood so that when I hit them they're going to come down not into the piece of wood. That way if I hit this out like this it's not going to shake this so much that it destroys the joint running down here. So I'll hit it until it's just long enough. If it starts bending a lot hopefully you can hit it out far enough to grab just with pliers like this one is. It's bending a lot. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah, that should be good enough to be able to grab. I can turn it here. Okay, so now I'm going to get the other sides out. Now incidentally, let's say when your drawer ripped, like this whole edge looked like this, and you can't put on a nice clean piece of wood. Um, one thing you can do is just run this, take off the, the track here, and run this through a saw and just cut a new clean edge. Your drawer is going to be a little bit shorter, but at least it will work. Um, if that doesn't work for you, if, if you're not very good at doing that, you can just mount this further inside. So let's say this is all bashed up and unusable and you can't cut a nice clean edge. You're not capable of that. We could just drill a few screws in here and put this here. Then turn your drawer around and now this is the new face and you can put your face on here. So you just switch the, the box around. Now you're still going to have these weak joints, but at least it gets you by um, a bit further. You will need to reverse these around, so flip them from one side to the other. So that's in case this is too ruined to uh, work with and, uh, and you can't cut a new edge. Okay, uh, let's take these out here. Again, just hang it over 
and you really don't want to hit this piece of wood if um, you know you're just hanging on to it. You don't want this wobbling and shaking around. You want it secured like this. Now we need to take this piece of wood off. I'll start with the uh, handle. These two screws do the handle and this screw lets go of the wood here, these two. That's it. Now we need to transfer these holes onto the new piece. To find out what size drill bit you need, you can take one and shove it in the hole. This one is a 3 16 and that fits the handle screws. And they did a quarter of an inch on that. That gives them a little bit of room uh, to play around with. So that quarter inch is actually a little bit bigger than you need. And they did that on purpose. Next thing you can do is if you have them, you can use uh, some clamps, and uh, I'm not clamping them to the table, I'm just clamping them together to stop it from sliding around. I'm using what are called C-clamps. You can get these pretty cheap at most hardware stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, places like that. And uh, make sure that your wood is lined up flush on the edges there. And I'm going to put it on the edge of the table. I'm going to go straight through, and I want to make sure that the hole I'm drilling is completely um, perpendicular to the wood. So a straight hole. Don't bend it or, or have it crooked. There's that one. And I'm going to have to move the clamp. Let's see if I can get away with it. Yeah, I can do it without moving the clamp. If you don't have a clamp, you can just have somebody stand on the wood, I guess, on the table. As long as it doesn't slide around, you're going to be all right. Okay, now I'm going to go to the 3 16 bit and drill out the handle holes. And there we go. Now because the new wood is thicker than the old wood, the problem that's going to happen is when I put, go to put the handle on, the screw is not going to be able to reach the threads. So what I need to do is drill a little bit deeper right here. And uh, you can just put your piece of wood down next to each other and uh, lay them both flat on the table and get the wood chips out of the way. Just draw a little line, and let's see, there they are, right here. That's how much material I need to move. The drill bit that you're going to use needs to be at least as big as the head of the screw to give enough room, and this one is a uh, 7 16 that I have here. And if you do have this kind of bit, most people don't, that's why I'm not showing you how to do it that way. Um, then you could use that first to drill a hole. These are great, it's gonna make a nice flat groove. And, uh, and then you can drill your hole the rest of the way uh, with the, uh, what was that, quarter inch bit? Uh, 3 16 So that's the better way to do it, but I'm gonna show you this way. Okay, so I know that I need to go down about a quarter of an inch, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. Tiny bit more. 
If you go too deep, you might have to get some washers inside there to um, back your screw out. And this is looking pretty good. Alright, so now we can try this out, see if it works. Let's put the screw in there. And where's the other one? Here it is. This one in here. Make sure I don't have any wood bits in between. There we go. And uh, you can see how these ones work. These are already countersunk. And this one, this type has holes that go in there. Let's see if it fits. Yep. All right, so that's done. You want to do this part before you mount this wood in the drawer because it's just going to be easier to work with if you have to take it off and it's not stuck in the drawer. Okay, next we're going to put in these. And I don't know if there's enough power in this, but I'll try it anyway. Put this one on. Okay, don't over tighten these. There we go, now that's ready. Now we can drill the holes in the side of here. Next I'm gonna use one and a quarter inch wood screws. And these are really common. You're not gonna have a hard time finding these. And I'm gonna put three of them right here. And what I have is a piece of wood lifting up the uh, front of the drawer and I'm gonna put the face in. And I'm gonna countersink them you can get these, they're countersink bits. It's a regular bit and then it um, makes a little um, arrow head shaped hole and that way it'll fit this flat in the drawer. If you don't have one of those, after you drill your hole and you'd use uh, about an eighth inch drill bit to drill the full first hole, then you can go in with a bigger drill bit, um, at least as big as the head, just barely go in and then you'll be able to make a, a countersink um, hole for the head. Or there's some countersink heads like this. You just have to watch out on these kinds because they can make a bigger hole. I'm just going uh, about a quarter of an inch, just over a quarter of an inch down. And that's what it should look like. Just enough for the head of the screw to go in. At this point, you could put a screw in just so you don't have to hold it anymore. You don't want to over tighten on these. You'll just split your wood. Now I'll just do the same thing on the other side. You can also put a few screws on the bottom as well, just like you did on the sides. Alright, and that's about it. Now obviously if you wanted to paint that wood white, you can go ahead and do that before it's attached. That's going to be a lot easier. Other than that, it's a pretty simple job. I hope this has helped. If so, please click like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can go to the About tab, click that, and you should see a support button there. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.